Hello, welcome to the channel. I've got another AI agent pattern as part of uh, my series. This one is about evaluator optimizer. And so let's go ahead and dive in. But before we do, if you enjoy this content, do give me a like. If you're not subscribed, do subscribe so that you can see future videos. Thank you, that'd be great. Okay, as I mentioned, this is a continuation of a series. Last week, I did put out a pattern around routing. If you haven't had a chance to see that, go ahead and check that out. I will put a link in the description of this video. Today, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the evaluator optimizer pattern. So, and once again, remember, like don't follow a trend just for the sake of following a trend, adopt the right approach that addresses the business outcome. So while I think it's super important that everybody goes and learns these different patterns and understands what's possible using generative AI, don't use generative AI just for the sake of it. Always make sure that you are using the right technology and tools for the right business outcome. All right, so this is that evaluator pattern. And once again, this is coming from the folks over at Anthropic. And my goal here is to take these patterns and implement them in Azure Logic Apps. So here what we've got is a situation where an LLM generates a response and then another LLM will evaluate and provide feedback in a loop. So you can see here, we're starting from left to right, we're gonna go in, generate a particular recommendation or output we will then propose that as the solution and then we'll let the evaluator go ahead and make a determination whether or not that is accepted or if it needs some refinement. So if it needs some refinement, it gives some feedback and it goes back to the generator and then we go through the cycle again. And the idea is that hopefully at this point we've made any sort of corrections or the AI has, we go ahead and accept it and have an output. And so uh, this is kind of some guidance on when this might be a good fit. And uh, you know what they're saying here is a workflow that is particularly effective is when we've got clear evaluation criteria and when iterative refinement provides measurable value. So you've got some sort of a signal. Yes, this meets the needs or no, this does not meet the needs. And so two signs that are a good fit. Uh, first is an LLM responses can be demonstrably improved when a human articulates the feedback. And second, the LLM can provide its own such feedback. So what I'm gonna do is today, I'm gonna to take you through the second scenario where we're gonna do what we see on screen. We've got a solution that's being proposed and then we're gonna go ahead and evaluate it. But I think the first one is super valid, valid as well. And that's a great human in the loop scenario where the LLM makes a recommendation, then a human gets added or like placed in the loop and they can give a thumbs up, thumbs down. And if they give thumbs down, then get feedback that then gets sent back to the AI for additional consideration. So this is the high level solution that I've got here. We're gonna use like a quote generation scenario where we've got a quote, it's been inserted into a table and upon that quote being inserted or updated, we will have a trigger which will listen for an event that's a create or update event. And then what we're gonna do is send this information, the raw information from the database to dataverse table and we're going to ask the LLM to propose a quote, like an email that we could use when sending to our customer. Now, we don't want just anything sent. We want this to be valid. We want it to make sure it's got the right information. We want to make sure that there was no hallucinations. And so this is our governance layer right here, our validate quote. This is where we can impose specific restrictions or constraints and make sure that whatever we're going to suggest um, is valid. Uh, in the event that we provide a good outcome, we will go ahead and send out the quote. In the event that uh, there's you know some corrections required, we won't and we're gonna use a do until loop and send that back for further refinement. So let's go ahead and uh, let's jump into a demo. Okay, here's the actual workflow and it kind of follows along what I just described on the slides. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to a table, look for any adds, modifies, or deletes. In this case, I'm just gonna look for any creates or updates. Then I've got a variable here just called additional requirements. This is a string. And this is what we're going to use to give feedback to the first AI process that's gonna actually generate the quote. I've got another variable here uh, just called break loop. It's a Boolean. This is going to uh, allow me to break the loop once I know I've got a valid quote. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to generate a quote. And so we're gonna say that you're an AI assistant that helps automate customer quotes for fourth coffee. 
you've got access to the actual quote, which comes from the quote system. So that's the record that came in from Dataverse. Remember, this is a very verbose message. Probably has got like 40, 50 fields. We're not interested in all of them. We're only interested in a handful. So the, uh, the job of the AI is to assemble a quote that includes relevant information, including the quote number, the customer name, the value of the quote, the expiry of the quote, and any applicable discount if it's available. Use the actual data from the quote system in the quote. Do not use additional information unless asked to. Now, there was obviously some tuning. This did not just happen in one take. I did have to make some tweaks. Um, obviously, large language models will construct information and will sometimes hallucinate, will sometimes include irrelevant data. And so I needed to go ahead and sort of include some additional constraints. So I want to formulate a professional email that's quoted, it's formatted in HTML, say that it's from the fourth coffee quote department, and then thank them for the business and ask for them to reach out to these details. Also remove any instances of these HTML tags at the beginning or the end of email, because that'll something that is system generated and that's something that isn't, you know, you don't want that to show up in an email. So here I've just got to compose. This is kind of just temporary. You'll see this when we debug this. This is just going to give us the output of this response, just makes it a little bit cleaner. Then what we're going to do is this is that optimizer step, right? So we're going to validate, give it feedback that allows us to then optimize. So we're going to say you're an AI assistant that helps automate customer quotes. A quote has been assembled in a previous step and is available here. Your job is to ensure this quote is complete and includes the following information. So this is kind of our governance. This is us imposing constraints and making sure our information is complete. Now, one thing I did find was that the uh, AI was always trying to use the customer's phone number and was trying to use it as our phone number from a contact information perspective. And so this is one of those things where I add a validation step that says, do not include the customer phone number here. And then I also say ensure there's no instances of those HTML tags because sometimes it was still including those. Now, this was another super important piece. Like it took this step initially and was almost trying to like recreate the quote and basically including updates to the quotes. And this is really where it comes down to a separation of concerns. You've got one step that is, is there for generation and then you've got one step for validation. And I would suggest don't confuse the two. Uh, don't try to make updates subsequently, provide the feedback, and then basically go back to the loop. Um, because then you can get into a really weird situation where you're reconstructing information and have the risk of either further hallucinating or further creating invalid information. So that's kind of the, the biggest tip from this is separate these concerns, content, validate content validate and so that's why i have this step uh, do not try to regen regenerate the quote only call out what's missing if all of the required information is present just return quote validated now this is where i you know especially as i was going through this this probably took me 15 times at least maybe more to actually get a sort of reasonable sort of demo going here and, and initially my intent was that okay if things are good, just return quote validate, otherwise provide these recommendations. I found that there were situations where it was doing both, where it could say this quote is validated, quote validated and, and things like that. And so that's where I added an additional step here. I added an additional step that basically says, take the output of the validation and just provide a one word response and it should be lowercase. And basically it's Boolean, true or false. And, and so this just allows sometimes you know, AI, it'll be verbose and we want something very succinct and very concise. And so this is more of a summary step, but that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and then, sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. The output from our validation is this additional requirements. This is the information that actually gets fed back up here, right? We're saying also account for any additional requirements here. And so the first run, this is going to be blank, right? But any subsequent run, we're going to get this feedback from the variable, which is the output of the validation step, and that is gonna get injected back in when we go through the loop. So once we've summarized this, if it's true, we know we're good to send an email. And then we're gonna set the variable, this is the break loop. This will break the loop so that when we go ahead and check the conditions, if break loop is equal to true, then we know we're done. Also, do set account. The default is 60. 
uh, you could probably get yourself into a big mess. Uh, I think the idea is here you've got a reasonable number of attempts for AI to do this. If you know you sort of time out per se, uh, then go ahead and you know loop out to a human here from that perspective. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. Let's try this. We're going to take this record, this quote 11, and we've got some customer information, John Doe, it's all fictitious, right? Their email address, a fake phone number, and then we've got a value. So we're just gonna go ahead and update this. We're just gonna say it's, it's uh, 1529, and then we're just gonna hit enter. So that represents a, an update to this record. So we'll come over to our run history. Let's just do a refresh here. Okay, let's take a look at this particular run. We can see here that we've got an email and we've got a quote, we've got a name, we've got an email address, value of the quotes, discount, quote expiry. Now, one thing I didn't tell you, and I did this on purpose, is that I deliberately left out any terms and conditions inside of generating the quote in this particular step. So I did that on purpose. But what I do have is in our validate step, our validate step is looking and saying that we need to have terms and conditions. So what it's saying here is that the provided quote is missing the terms and conditions. Uh, so that uh, that's an issue. So the feedback is please ensure the terms and conditions are added after the expiry date. Once the terms and conditions have been added, it should be included in the following information. So it's even giving very prescriptive guidance around that. And then it's saying after you include the terms and condition, the quote should be complete and validated. So that's pretty cool, right? So basically this gets outputted and into the summary and the summarization is going to be like, okay, this is not ready. Uh, the chat completion is now false. So when we hit our condition, naturally this is equal to false, not true. So we need to go ahead and loop around. So we come into this loop, right? And this time, as part of our inputs, we're going to see should some additional instructions. Okay, it's okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, also account for additional requirements here. So the additional requirements, and that's what this is, is what came from our, our previous validation step. So that was dynamically generated and giving the AI more instructions to make sure that you know, we include terms and conditions. So now let's go ahead and look at the compose and just see what was outputted. And here we can now see that we've got terms and conditions have been included. Looks good, looks promising. So we now pass that into the validate step. And now it's saying, okay, this has now meets our requirements. The quote has been validated. Well, we just update that variable. And then when we go ahead and summarize this, it basically comes back with like a true value, meaning that we now have validation. We then go ahead and we send out that information that you know we should feel fairly confident in now because we've had AI check our work. We set our break loop variable equal to true, and then that concludes the do until we only had this second iteration. So let's now go ahead and take a look at the email. Okay, and we look at our email here. And we can see that we've got the quote ID, the customer, we got the email address, we have the quote value, the discount, the expiry date, and here we have our terms and conditions, which do match what we have inside of Dataverse. And so this is an example of, of how the AI can check up on someone else on a previous AI step and make sure it conforms to our standards. And I think this is just a good practice in general, a good pattern that you should always have AI validating the work of other AI because we do know things can hallucinate. I think as things move forward in time, those only improve, but you know, it's, it's a good step, especially if you've got like a customer service case here uh, where you don't want to send something out embarrassing to a customer. This gives you a little bit more governance and, and make sure that uh, you're doing things the right way. And as I mentioned before, we also can, uh, you know, leverage humans to do this and we'll, we'll see that in a future video. So hopefully you enjoyed this pattern. Uh, sort of key takeaway here is that AI continues to change, continues to improve, continues to emerge. Do yourself a favor, spend some time learning this 
Uh, it's one of those things where this is getting too big to ignore. And uh, regardless of how you feel about AI, understanding it is something that will only benefit you. So go ahead and uh, have a great week and we'll see you again soon.